It's not a comet, and it's not from here. Just months ago, 3i slash Atlas was a greenish blur on the edge of the solar system. Now it's racing toward the sun at nearly 70 kilometers per second, shrouded in a coma so vast it dwarfs planets and turning an ominous deep red along the way. But here's what no one expected. Its shifting colors make no chemical sense. Its glow moves from red to green without warning, and the core remains completely hidden, anywhere from the size of a city block to a mountain. If 3, I slash Atlas just turned into a reddish color, what does that reveal about its true identity, and what are we actually witnessing as this alien traveler barrels toward Mars and the Sun? At this moment, 3, I slash Atlas is moving through the inner solar system at nearly 68 kilometers per second. That is over 240,000 kilometers every hour, fast enough to cross the distance from Earth to the Moon in less than an hour and a half. For comparison, that's about twice the orbital speed of Mercury, the fastest planet in our solar system, and more than 10 times the closing velocity of most long-period comets as they approach the Sun. This is not a slow drift through space, it's a kinetic jolt, a visitor from beyond the Sun's reach, plunging inward with energy that dwarfs anything in the planetary neighborhood. The trajectory of 3i slash Atlas is hyperbolic. Its path is not bound to the Sun, it's just passing through on a one-time visit. The inbound speed, clocked at over 60 kilometers per second before perihelion, rules out any possibility that this object originated from the Kuiper Belt or Oort Cloud. Only a true interstellar traveler arrives with this much momentum, untouched by the slow, looping orbits of native comets. Velocity on this scale means the forces at play are immense. As Atlas barrels in, solar radiation and wind slam into the coma stripping material and charging particles at a rate rarely seen. The object's kinetic energy, driven by that 68 km per second speed, is enough to vaporize surface ices and blast dust outward in a shock of activity. Every second, it covers a distance equal to the width of a small country. These are not numbers we see in ordinary comet science. This is something else, a body moving too fast, too straight, and too powerfully to fit the mold of anything born inside our solar system. Wrapped around 3i slash Atlas is a dusty envelope so vast it nearly defies imagination. Even the most powerful telescopes, Hubble, Gemini, the Nordic Optical, show only a faint, glowing shroud, with the true edge lost in the background of space. The coma, made of dust and gas swept out by solar radiation, expands outward for thousands of kilometers, overwhelming any trace of the object's solid heart. At best, high-resolution imaging places the core at less than 5.6 kilometers across, but some estimates, based on how much sunlight the coma reflects, go as low as a few hundred meters or as high as 50 kilometers. That is a spread of more than two orders of magnitude. The only certainty is that the nucleus is dwarfed by its own outflow, hidden inside a haze that could be many times wider than the planet Mars. This kind of scale is not just a spectacle, it's a measurement problem. Every attempt to pin down the core's size runs into the same wall. The coma outshines and outnumbers the nucleus by orders of magnitude, scattering light and masking the object's true shape. Even with the best data, astronomers are left with a range, not a number. If the core is on the smaller end, it would be one of the tiniest interstellar objects ever caught. If it's larger, it could rival the biggest known cometary nuclei. Until a spacecraft or a perfectly timed occultation reveals the interior, the heart of 3i slash Atlas remains a mystery, fueling debate over what exactly we are witnessing and what to even call it. Inside the offices of the International Astronomical Union, the official name for 3i slash Atlas is a point of friction. The last time planetary definitions changed, the fallout from Pluto's demotion lingered for years. This time, with a rare interstellar visitor at the center, the stakes are even higher. Social media amplifies every rumor, and science communicators field questions from classrooms and newsrooms alike. Should people call it a comet, a planetary fragment, or something entirely new? Without clear evidence, a premature rebrand could undermine trust, muddying the distinction between speculation and fact. For now, the guidance is steady. Wait for the data, keep the story consistent, and prepare for the possibility that the next observation could upend everything.
The first polarimetric images of 3i slash Atlas arrived in late July, and within hours, the data set off a storm of speculation. Dr. Tony Santana Ros and his colleagues at the Instituto de Astrofisica de Canarias had just finished calibrating a series of exposures from the Nordic Optical Telescope. They expected the usual diffuse haze, random, featureless, a kind of cosmic fog. Instead, the maps plotted as a clean, steep curve, with a negative branch that dropped lower and sharper than anything in the catalog. The degree of linear polarization, measured as the angle between incoming sunlight and the scattered light from dust grains, reached minus 2.8% at just over 6 degrees phase angle. That's a value more often seen in distant centaurs than in comets. The inversion, where the polarization shifts from negative to positive, landed right at 17 degrees. Again, a match for objects in the outer reaches of the solar system, not the inner zones where comets typically roam. Santana Ross remembers the moment. We had barely enough nights to catch the coma's rings before it evolved. Each new image changed the story. But as the team pushed their reduction pipeline, searching for the rumored concentric bands, the maps remained stubbornly uniform. There was no sign of rings, no double-layered shell, just a homogeneous field. Cross-checks with the fours. Two instrument on the Very Large Telescope in Chile and the Rosian Observatory in Bulgaria confirmed the result. Any variation in polarization across the coma was below 0.2%, well within instrumental noise. Synthetic data runs, designed to test for hidden features, produced the same outcome. The coma's structure was smooth, the polarization curve dramatic, but the spatial maps gave up no secrets. The absence of ordered rings didn't diminish the shock. The phase angle behavior alone set Atlas apart. The negative branch, so deep and narrow, pointed to dust grains larger and darker than those in typical comets, possibly aggregates laced with organic compounds and ices shaped in the coldest corners of space. Models built for solar system comets failed to reproduce the curve unless they borrowed parameters from small trans-Neptunian objects like Pholus. That left the team with a puzzle. An object that looks like a centaur, moves like an interstellar visitor, and scatters light in a way no comet has before. The evidence was clear, even if the underlying physics was not. For Santana Ross and his peers, the surprise wasn't in the absence of rings, but in the unmistakable signal that 3, I slash Atlas refuses to fit any standard mold. Dust from interstellar objects is often imagined as a random mix of tiny grains, drifting and shaped by the push and pull of sunlight and solar wind. With 3 I slash Atlas, the evidence points to something far less ordinary. The polarization curve, marked by a pronounced negative branch and a sharp inversion at 17 degrees, signals the presence of large irregular aggregates. These aren't the compact, bright grains familiar from most comets. Instead, they are loose, porous clusters, woven from organics and ice, their structure more like tangled webs than polished stones. Such aggregates scatter light in ways rarely observed in the inner solar system, hinting at origins in colder, darker places. The coma's polarization map adds another layer to the puzzle. If plasma effects or engineered shells were shaping the dust, distinct rings or bands would appear clear, organized patterns in the data. Instead, the coma remains smooth, its polarization varying by less than 0.2% across all observed fields. Independent measurements from FORS2, ALFOSC, and Rogen confirm this uniformity. There are no signs of jets, shock fronts, or plasma waves at work. The data consistently point to a population of large, dark aggregates, closely resembling dust seen on Centaur Fullus and some small trans-Neptunian objects. This resemblance is not just superficial. The deep negative polarization branch and red spectral slope both indicate dust that has endured millions of years in the outermost reaches of a planetary system, altered by cosmic rays and coated in complex organics known as tholins. For 3 i atlas the coma becomes a record of another star's debris disk, each aggregate grain preserving clues to its own formation and chemical evolution. The absence of ordered rings narrows the field of explanations. Rather than plasma-driven or artificial origins, 
The evidence favors natural, rare dust aggregation, material shaped by interstellar weathering, assembled far from the sun, now passing through our sky for the first time. A single photograph, snapped in the pre-dawn hours of September 7th from the Namibian highlands, electrified the astronomy world. The object at the center glowed a vivid, almost neon green, startlingly bright against the dark sky. The photographer, known for capturing rare cometary apparitions, had set up with a full suite of filters, expecting the familiar red hue that had dominated every scientific report to date. Instead, the camera's sensor recorded a color that didn't belong. Green, as if the interstellar traveler had swapped its ancient, weathered cloak for something alive and volatile. Within hours, the image made its way through astronomy networks and into the inboxes of professional observers. The confusion was immediate. All previous spectra, from the Nordic Optical Telescope to the JWST's near-infrared scans, had shown a steep red slope, 18% per 1,000 angstroms, redder than most comets, a match for Centaur Pholus and the darkest trans-Neptunian objects. This redness was no accident. It was the signature of grains battered by cosmic rays, coated in organic tholins and shaped in the coldest reaches between stars. Yet here, in a single night, the object shone green, as if its chemistry had shifted in real time. The usual culprit for cometary green is the C2 molecule, which fluoresces when broken apart by sunlight. But days before, high-resolution spectra from Chile and La Palma had shown almost no C2 emission an absence that seemed to rule out the standard explanation. Chemists suggested other candidates, perhaps trace CN or even CO+, could be responsible, but neither had been detected in significant amounts. Some pointed to the possibility of ultra-fine icy grains, scattering light through Rayleigh effects as the coma's dust population evolved. Others wondered if the filter response or sensor bias had amplified a fleeting, wavelength-specific burst. The debate spilled into preprint servers and social media, with every new theory chased down by teams eager to explain the color mismatch. The photographer's raw files, released for open analysis, confirmed the event wasn't a processing artifact. Multiple amateur astronomers across Southern Africa reported a similar green tinge, though none as striking as the original image. Within 48 hours, professional observatories had retargeted the object, hoping to catch a repeat none did. The green vanished as quickly as it appeared, leaving behind a trail of questions. Was this a transient chemical outburst, a rare scattering event, or the first hint of a process not yet catalogued in comet science? The only certainty was that 3i slash Atlas had refused to play by the rules of either comets or centaurs, and in doing so had widened the gap between what could be measured and what could be explained. October 3rd is circled on every mission planner's calendar. That's when 3i slash Atlas will pass near Mars, close enough for the planet's fleet of orbiters to train their cameras and spectrometers on a true interstellar core. The teams behind MAVEN, ExoMars, TGO, and HOPE have spent weeks debating how much risk to take. Dust in the coma could threaten sensitive instruments, but the chance to resolve a nucleus from outside the solar system is a scientific lure too strong to ignore. NASA and ESA have scheduled short, targeted campaigns, hoping for a clear shot as Atlas threads the Martian neighborhood. If the coma thins enough, a clean image of the core could shrink the current size estimates from a 50-kilometer spread to a single number. That kind of data would end years of speculation in a few frames. After the Mars flyby, the object will slip behind the Sun for nearly a week, superior conjunction, starting October 21st. Ground-based telescopes will lose sight completely, leaving a blackout window where anything could happen and no one on Earth can watch. Automated scripts and alert lists are primed, ready to catch any post-conjunction anomaly, a sudden spike in brightness, a deviation in path, or a new outburst as solar heating peaks. The world's observatories are holding their collective breath. For the moment, Atlas reappears, just days before its closest approach to the Sun on October 29th. The timing of these windows has fueled a wave of speculation, not just about what will be seen, but what might be missed. Some researchers have floated the idea that the coma's smoothness and scale are more than just natural outgassing. What if the dust shell is a kind of shield 
engineered or evolved to protect the core as it races through the inner solar system. The double-layered coma, if it exists, could act as a plasma cloak, scattering light and repelling charged particles. Fringe theories online have even suggested a deliberate disguise, a shell that shifts its reflective properties to mask what's inside. There's no evidence for such engineering, but the object's refusal to fit any standard category keeps the door open for the wildest possibilities. For mission teams, the stakes are high. A clear look at the core could rewrite the rules for interstellar science. A missed opportunity might leave the object's true nature hidden for decades or forever. The story of 3i slash Atlas now hangs on a handful of observation windows, a race against distance, brightness, and the blinding light of the sun. Whether the next image reveals a natural relic or something stranger, the coming weeks will decide what questions future astronomers get to ask. Its deep red color, measured at an 18% per 1000 angstrom spectral slope, marks it as distinctly interstellar, yet green emissions photographed on September 7th defy simple chemical explanation. Polarimetric data from July and August revealed structured patterns not seen in typical comets, raising new questions about its makeup and origins. Despite thorough observations, the nucleus size remains uncertain, with estimates ranging from 0.2 to 50 kilometers. As 3i slash Atlas approaches perihelion on October 29th after a close Mars pass, scientists are still debating its classification and watching for more surprises. The story of 3i slash Atlas shows how even with advanced instruments and global collaboration, some mysteries persist. Its true nature and what it can teach us about interstellar visitors remains an open question.